How to build an engaging drag and drop exercise. In this video, we will show you how to build this drag and drop exercise in Adobe Captivate step by step. This is a simple drag and drop slide where you have to sort objects into two categories by dragging them to the correct box. Once you are done, you will get feedback on how well you have done the task. This is a free example, so you can download it after the video and use it in your own projects. Feel free to do that. Ok, let's get started. We have already placed all the objects that we will need in this slide, but we haven't set any actions. Here in the timeline you can see all objects that are in the slide, as well as two feedback groups, one with correct feedback and one with incorrect. In this example we have chosen a topic that's probably a piece of cake for most of you, but maybe some of you will find it challenging. We have six superheroes, and the learner will have to decide in which universe each of them belongs. Easy, right? We have all objects ready, and now we can add the drag and drop interactivity to our slide. Click Interactions and select Drag and Drop. Now we have a new interface that will consist of three steps. In the first one, we have to mark all objects that we need to sort. In this case, these are the superheroes. Click on all six boxes so that they all have green frames around them. Now click Next and we will move on to the next step. Now we will have to select drop targets or in this case the boxes. In the final step you will have to set the right answers by dragging each superhero to the correct box below. Click on the small arrow and drag it to the first box. There you go! Let's quickly set all the correct answers. And don't worry if you set something wrong. You will be able to change the correct answers after we are finished with the setup. Now we are all set and we can click Finish. We are back in our slide and we can continue working with our new drag and drop interaction. If the arrows are getting in your way, you can simply hide them from here. First we can change the style of the Submit button so it would go better with our example and then we can add actions to show feedback. Select the Submit button and choose the last style from the drop-down. Let's move it here. Great! Now let's move on to the drag and drop tab. Here we can select what happens when the user submits his answers. If all of the answers are set correctly, we want the correct feedback to show. So in the first line we will set the action Show and we will choose the correct feedback. Next, we will do the same with incorrect feedback. As we have created custom feedback for this slide, we probably won't use the inbuilt ones, so we can uncheck these boxes. Great, we have set all the necessary things for our action to work properly. Now we can work on the little details that will make the example more attractive. If you remember from the beginning of the video, the boxes opened up when we tried to drop something in them. This is an easy feature that we can add. We have already prepared the open box image, so we will just need to add a new state to both boxes. Select the first one and click State View. To add a new state, click this button and here we can choose from the inbuilt states. Select Drag Over. We can change the image from here. Choose Image and click OK. Great! Now we will have to do the same with the other box. We can move between objects in one slide by using this drop-down option. Select the other box and we will do exactly the same. Add a new state and change the image. Great! Let's close the state view and there is one more thing we need to set to our drag sources. In our example, the drag sources disappeared when they were dropped on the boxes. So now we will need to adjust the settings to hide the drag sources when they are dropped. Select the first box and in the Format tab we can set what happens when our user drops the object on this box. Here we have three options how to do it. We can either set the size to be 0% once the object is dropped, we can change the opacity to be 0% or we can set both of them to 0%. As we have two boxes, we can do the first two options to see which style we prefer better. So 
So for the first box, we will set the size to zero. And for the second box, we will set the opacity to zero. Great. Now we can take a look if everything is working as we expected. Click Preview from this slide. Let's sort them out. And here you can see that the reaction for each box is a little bit different based on what we set in the Format tab. Now click Submit and there you go. We have the correct feedback. Here we have the Exit button. But I can show you how you can change it to anything else. Here, let's open up the correct feedback. Now you can see why I showed you earlier how to hide the arrows. Double click on the button and you can change the text. Let's type in next slide and under the actions tab we can change the action to go to the next slide. Great! If you plan to change the button, remember that you have two feedbacks and you will have to do the same for incorrect feedback too. Well, that's about it. Don't forget to download this example for free from the link below.